The questioner uh, asks this. Minnesota, statistically, is a very religious and even Christian state, yet the culture of the state seems to have moved to, at least especially in political and economic terms, a more libertarian stance, turning away from a sense of uh, the interdependence of communities, a more libertarian, take care of ourselves stance. And the questioner ties this to Jesse Ventura as a sort of um, watershed in that move, but I think the questioner could have found other watersheds too. The questioner asks, what's happened? Um, what's going on in Minnesota? Where is the church? Um, is the church failing in faith formation? Uh, and uh, the questioner quotes uh, Jim Wallace, how do we change the wind? I, I think Minnesota is not unique in this way, but turning more towards, the politics are turning more towards what's in it for me, how can I protect my interests, not how can I look at the common good. Um, and I'm not sure that that's because the public is overwhelmingly doing it. I'm not saying there's not a shift over a 20, 30 year period of time on it, but I think most of the changes in politics overstate any change in the public will there. The example, I think I mentioned how Hubert Humphrey used to talk about how we're good people in Minnesota, we care about each other, we're gonna take care of people in nursing homes. When Ronald Reagan got elected in 1980 and said, you know, who can spend your money better, you or the government? That was clearly an appeal to, one was appeal to the generosity, the common good, one was more to the self-interest and so on. And Ronald Reagan won by a solid margin, but. I don't know that everybody overnight decided, yeah, we don't care about others anymore. And I think in recent years, yes, under the current governor and others, we've been moving to, I mean, vicious ways. We're taking the sickest, they admitted it was the 70,000, the 35,000, any one time sickest people in the state. They were taking away all their health care. And that's a pretty radical idea. And I don't think Minnesotans all of a sudden moved really radically to the we don't care about anybody else. I'd say it's more the political system did, and it's partly because you need two sides of a conversation, and only one side was talking for the last 20, 30 years. You hear, I'd say until, and I, this is my amateur analysis of politics in this country over the last 40 years or so, that was when Ronald Reagan took office. He moved us to the point where we, he started talking, we're not gonna take care of those people. We're gonna do this, we're, we're gonna lead this charge. And Democrats kind of decided, you know, boy, he's popular. The country must have moved very far to the right, so we don't dare say that. And you get to 1984, I mean, that long ago, Walter Mondale was running, if you look at his platform, this was the liberal Walter Mondale, was saying, we're gonna increase defense spending too, but not as much as Reagan. We're gonna cut welfare too, but not as much as Reagan because he knew, or he felt, you can't speak out against this tide of public opinion. And that's been happening for year after year after year. And at a certain point, we cut back a little more, we cut back a little more, now we're cutting people, the sickest people in the state and taking away their health care. And I don't know that the public is all of a sudden saying that's okay to do. I think it's gotten to the point where nobody's saying that's wrong. I mean, there are plenty of I'm understating the fact that nobody's saying it, but there are very few people in elective office who are saying it. There are plenty of groups out there, groups that work with homeless people saying this, but we don't ask for much and the politicians don't offer much, and so nobody's talking about ending poverty, homelessness. You know, think back 30 years, in pre-1980, we didn't have homeless shelters. Simpson Housing, St. Stephen's, we didn't have those. We did have Union Gospel Mission because we've never done a good job of dealing with the street people, the chronically mentally ill and chemically dependent. We've never done a good job. But you didn't have families living homeless. You didn't have working people who were homeless. We made a conscious choice at the federal level and the state level. We're not gonna do what we did to address housing anymore. And because, so I'd make the real, i talk too long about this, so I'll quickly summarize by saying, I think what we need in, Politics is to recognize that you need two sides of the debate. Until the 1980s, there were two sides. Some people were saying, we care about each other. We're good people. We want to be a, look at the common good. And the other half was saying, no, appeals to generosity on one side, appeals to self-interest on the other. And after that point, it became appeals to self-interest versus appeals to self-interest, but let's not go too far that way. 
and there was never a response on the other side. And I think that's what's bothering me when I use that example of the progressive movement getting so timid that you know, we'd be so proud of ourselves for limiting slavery to 40-hour work weeks. We really have become so timid. And I think appeals to greed have always worked in American politics. Appeals to fear have always worked. Whether it's immigrants or blacks or gays or whoever it is, those appeals to fear have always worked. But so have appeals to generosity and common good. You just hear a whole lot fewer of them now. And that's, that's what I think has changed. Not the public attitude as much as the political leadership and therefore the public expectation. I, I see about 30 wonderful questions there. These are such good questions, and we, maybe our answers are too long, but I'm going to throw in one more little thing on his deal. A bibliographical note. Um, the current issue of Harper's Magazine on the decline of liberalism, and he says, somewhere along the line, they decided to be helpless. That somewhere the big things are just too big. We're not going to be able to win this back, we're not going to win that back, we're not going to win this. And so we're helpless. And the more you do that, the worse off you are. And I think if I could give a very unbiased view, I think politicians like John Marty are saying we don't have to stay helpless. We can cease. And that's part of why, even if I weren't your father, I'd probably be for you. 